Okay, this is an echocardiogram on about a 40 pound cocker cross. Um, right lateral recumbency. This is the echo sequence four chamber. From this position, nice long left ventricle. Adjust my sweep speed a little bit. Septum and free wall are the same thickness subjectively. Septum and diastole, internal diameter diastole, free wall diastole. Septum and systole, internal diameter and systole, free wall systole. Peak to peak to get the heart rate. So that, same position, four chamber long <coughs> axis, cursor is going to go between or through the septum and into the mitral valve to create the EPSS measurement where it's the maximum extension of the mitral valve towards the interventricular septum. It's a parameter we use primarily for dilated cardiomyopathy. Same position, four chamber long axis. Closure of the mitral valve. Near edge to near edge parallel measurement to the mitral valve annulus from the atrial septum to the atrial free wall. That's the LA max. <coughs> From this position, four chamber long axis, drop the tail slightly, you get an LA to AO, June Boone method, cursor goes right through the aortic valve, the aortic valve is in the middle, we see the aortic valve closure here, opening and closure, LA to AO measurement at the depression of the aortic valve in the near field, left atrium creates an LA to AO of 0.98, normal up to 1.15. Save that. From here, four efficiency clips, four chamber to five chamber, four chamber long axis to five chamber long axis, save that. Four chamber to five chamber, twist the probe to short axis heart base, where we have the left atrium, aorta, pulmonary artery, tricuspid valve, right atrium, and back. Twisting back and twisting forward. We can focus on the left ventricle. Put the left ventricle in the middle. Now twist. We have an efficiency clip of the left ventricle. Tilting, tilting the probe back and forth. We can go from heart base, heart base where the aorta and atrium is, to left ventricle in the mushroom view in an efficiency clip, so we save that, so we can assess contractility, twist away again on the probe, back to four chamber. From the four chamber, we put the two atria in the middle, or the septum, atrial septum's in the middle, clearest image we can, I slide caudally a rib space, and bring the tail of the probe caudally, and I point towards the right shoulder, and with that I get a nice shot of the tricuspid valve and right atrium, as I change angles on the tail of the probe, I can get the right auricle and the pulmonary feather vena cave inflow. I can do my Doppler on the tricuspid valve. See if anything pops up. I can put spectral on it. A little valve noise on the tricuspid. From the right atrial view, drop the tail of the probe and the pulmonary artery comes down the pipe. Great spot for spectral Doppler and get the right ventricular outflow velocity. A little bit of pulmonic insufficiency there. Right here, pulmonic insufficiency. Change the angle and I'll miss that. Forward flow. This is probably my cleanest one. 87 is normal. Up to 180 to 200 is normal on the pulmonary outflow. So if I raise the tail of the probe, it goes towards the right atrium. If I lower the tail of the probe, it goes towards the pulmonary artery. From here, 
I slide caudally rib space and put the left atrium down about 4 o'clock. And from this position, I get the mitral valve in a good position for color Doppler. And I got a regard jet right here. And I'm going to drop the CW over it because I know that velocity is going to be over 5 meters per second by definition. If you're getting a microns 50 velocity under 5 meters per second, you're not lined up correctly, which is what's exactly happening now. It's a very small jet. And we can see that here I'm offline, here I'm offline, here I'm online. Because I have a nice clean jet and I'm over 5 meters per second. That's what you have to find with the mitra valve. And so you can see that the mitral sufficiency jet, if it's really small, you have to catch it at the right position to get the maximum velocity. And we can check it from the apical view here as well. So now from this view, I'm going to go and sub-xiphoid. The patient is always in right lateral recumbency. And go sub-xiphoid from the abdomen, going into the chest, through the liver. And this is a 3S probe. I'm at 4 megahertz on this particular dog. And I have the apical view where I have the mitral valve. I can check my velocity again from here. You'll see that regurg jet popping in right there. So I can drop the CW, spectral Doppler, right down the pipe and get a nice flow there as well. I actually get a better MR jet, nice clean envelope from this view. And I'm six meters per second. And the reason is. From the four chamber long axis view, I was not lined up correctly, and therefore I got a subnormal velocity for this dog. This dog actually has a six meters per second velocity by just changing position because I'm better lined up with the flow of the regurgitative jet. So here I can get my aortic outflow as well. Nice clean envelope. up to two meters per second is essentially normal on the aortic outflow. And with this I can check for other regurgitant flows and measure them if need be. Remember blue is away, red is towards the transducer and you see that there's only blue flow coming down the aorta here. And the regurgitant flow in the mitral valve is the blue is away from the probe. So we have blue flow into left atrium, then we have mitral insufficiency. And that's it.